school days. I did not want to watch this anime. Let me just be clear about that here, because this was the show, the one show that I wanted to avoid. Actually, there's Boku no Pico now that I think about it. But School Days is the one non-hentai show, uh, non-yaoi show that I wanted to avoid ever since I was making YouTube videos. And not for the traditional reasons of, you know, everyone says the worst anime of all time. I don't mind watching that because it's 12 episodes long. It's not really that bad. But... I mean, there are actually worse anime that came out this year, such as Big Order, which I did a review of that. I think that was this year anyways, but it was pretty bad. But the reason why I avoided this for so long is because I was spoiled like crazy about this. This has got to be the most spoiled anime that there is out there, simply because it's got that twist ending. But it's not just that. I knew, like, everything else in between, and just watching this is just brings back a lot of memories. People were just telling me everything that happened and me reading things just by accident about like everything that happened. I knew it all and nothing was a surprise to me. So it was kind of a boring watch because of that, but it is definitely not the worst anime out there. And the story is a bit of a harem following Makoto and his descent into being a total horn dog, where he just wants to have sex with everybody around him. But it wasn't like that at first. In the beginning, he's got this innocent crush on this cute girl, uh, Kota Noha, who is totally innocent, and his friend Sekai goes and sets that up, which is kind of awkward because she has a thing for Makoto as well, but she's keeping quiet and actually getting him set up with different women. Watching School Days is a lot like watching a train crash in slow motion because you know there's going to be some people getting hurt in the end and it just takes you 12 episodes to get to that point. For me, the best parts of the show, and by the way, when I say best, we are talking about School Days here, but uh, the first six episodes were easily the best moments for me. The last six, I didn't really care for those so much. I mean, I didn't care for a lot of the episodes, but those were uh, visibly worse. I kind of trailed off on some of those and had to rewatch them. And then uh, the final episode of it was something I actually did enjoy that for its own reasons. But as far as the first half of it is concerned, why that's actually better in my view is that uh, it actually gave some development to Makoto. He started off as someone who wasn't really that popular with women. He started off with uh, Kotonoha, he pushed himself on her, and he realized like she is way too innocent for this, and she just wasn't digging any of that stuff, so he started like just expressing the urge that he had, which was just the sexual frustration, basically, and he wanted to go out with different women and just have sex with a bunch of different women. So that was actually a little bit of character development on his part, and I don't necessarily agree with the things that he does here, but as a character, he, there is a little bit of development in the first half of the show, and I also thought they did a pretty good job with Kotonoha and Sekai in terms of how they express their emotions through their body language. I felt that that was animated uh, pretty good about how we could see how distraught Kotonoha was over the stressful events that were happening to her because there was a lot of messed up things going on where Sekai would actually pressure her into doing something and then uh, Makoto would pressure her into doing something. So Kotonoha, she was really affected by this and through her body language you could see that she was super innocent and that she was just distraught by a lot of the things that were going on and she just couldn't think straight so she was definitely someone that they did a good job of having her express her emotions without having actual dialogue and we get to see uh, the same thing with Sekai to a lesser extent especially later on in the uh, the first half of the anime where uh, we have Makoto who is actually with other girls after being with her and we can actually see how just uh, tore up she is over it but I feel like something like that with her was to be expected so I think overall they did a better job uh, using this expression on uh, Kotonoha. So for the second half of the show, women are just coming out of the woodwork for Makoto. Left and right, it's like every single girl there just wants to get with him. I guess his reputation got out because he was getting with every girl he could, and because this is anime that actually attracted them. And I know that this is something which is an adaptation from a visual novel, which is created under the uh, assumption that its target audience is just going to be beating it raw while they're playing it, but I felt like as an anime, it was pretty tame. There was sex, there was nudity, but they, they limited a lot of the graphic content, and I would just assume, like, if it's from a hentai game, you should make the anime a hentai and just go, like, all out with it. I don't know why they would hold back, because I think it would actually be a lot more popular, and this is something that would actually work a whole lot better as a hentai, because it does have that wild ending. I think you can either do one or the other, and that's probably what a lot of the people have an issue with with this anime, is that it tries to do both. It tries to do a lot of the wild and wacky things that you see in some of the weird moments of a visual novel, but at the same time, it tries to have 
a, a romance in the beginning of it, and I know visual novels do that at times too, but I just felt like if they had stuck to doing one or the other, then the show might have been a whole lot better received. We also see some additional development for Makoto as he goes further down that rabbit hole of becoming a total sex fiend, which doesn't take long for him, honestly, and as far as his main love interests go, Kotonoha and Sakai, uh, they're losing their minds. They're going batshit crazy in the second half, and the road to Crazy Town is a much shorter drive for Kotonoha, and she is just so stressed. She's just having this breakdown. She is trying to call him on her phone, but he's got her number blocked, and he's just, she's sitting there talking and pretending to talk to the message that's saying, like, we can't connect you to his phone. She was just losing it, and Sekai wasn't any better. She had become so obsessed and uh, manipulative in the second half, where she was sending guys after Kotonoha. She was just really uh, manipulative and just wanting what was hers. She wanted a guy that she knew she couldn't trust, that had already been with everybody in school at that point, and she was like really obsessed with him at that point. And as far as, you know, that final episode, I was just like, I wish I could have seen this without having heard about all that stuff, because I would have just like, I don't know what my reaction would have been. Did you see this without knowing what would happen in the end? Let me know what your reaction was, because I have no reaction. I knew what all it was, but I still thought it was like, uh, pretty enjoyable just because of how like weird the ending was where we have um Sekai that kills him uh Kotonoha cuts his head off and puts it in the bag and then uh, she kills uh Sekai and like opens up her stomach to see that she's not pregnant or anything. like it was such a weird and crazy ending that I'm pretty sure there were some people out there at some point in time who weren't expecting that who probably just flipped the table upside down that they were sitting at as far as the series overall value I really uh, don't think it's anything that's good and I would recommend anybody to watch even though I did state a few positives that's just calling it how I see it but it is so much better than plenty of other anime out there like Super Kid check my review to Super Kid there's Big Order there is I'm gonna say it, I like this more than I like Gangsta. <laughs> Let me go high. In all honesty though, School Days is a pretty bad anime. I would say maybe a 4 out of 10 at best, at worst, I guess a 3. You know, it's not really that bad. There's a lot of worse other shows out there. I don't know if it's actually worse than Gangsta or not. I, I didn't really care for either of them, to be honest with you. But uh, this is something that I would only recommend to people if they just want to watch an anime that is bad. And that's really it. Like, I don't see any point other than that to watch this, because, like, everybody knows what happened with it. All in all, I'm just glad that this experience is over with. I finished it. I will never have to watch School Days again. And that is a very good thing. Probably the best thing about the anime. And, I mean, it's not the worst anime. Not by far. There's plenty of other worse anime that I've seen. But I just... I wish this was dubbed, all honesty. This would have been one of the biggest anime for me that needed to be dubbed because I did not want to sit there and look at every single frame of this and read all the subtitles of this. I just wanted to watch it and listen to people. I, I don't know Japanese, and I really did not... Really didn't enjoy this, to be honest with you. But uh, let me know your thoughts about School Days in the comments section below. What did you think of the review? If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Don't know what I'll be doing yet, but I'll see you guys next time.